okay the top is usually is the top you can see and do whatever you want after hard work uh, principle after. of perfusion in nephrology uh, presented by Tarek Zayan. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to meet you. you. It's nice to share uh, the knowledge to, uh, with you and hearing a lot from you to learn how to help our patients with the new technology. Uh, I started by introduction, and I will say when, uh, under certain conditions, the presence of some pathogen in the bloodstream which exceed the cell metabolic capacity can lead often to illness as sepsis, organ failure, severe intoxication and autoimmune disease, accumulation of protein bound uremic toxin and large middle molecule. On long term hemodialysis, patient can cause hemodialysis related complications. What is our challenge usually in hemodialysis? That we have usually a lipid soluble toxin, sometimes highly protein bound toxins, like if the patient develops infection or something like that, or taking the drug by mistake. Cytokines, if the patient develops sepsis, into toxins and pathogens, antibodies, especially or antigen antibody complex, if the original disease was autoimmune disease, hepatic toxin like in liver failure. So the search for improved blood purification technique is mandatory. Now we're coming to the very important issue. Without my basic, I cannot stand. So I need a pillar. So our pillar in nephrology is usually the basic starting from the physiology. Now we in the service uh, that present in our day for extracorporeal organ support, we have hemodialysis by all its modality, peritoneal dialysis, CKRT, continuous kidney replacement therapy, and slow continuous ultra filtration, especially for a patient with heart disease. We have plasma perfusion, plasma exchange. We have hemoperfusion. We have Absorption with hemodialysis. We have MARST, which is molecular adsorbent recirculating system. We have ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, either venovenous or veno arterial, and the extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal. Starting by the simple technique in dialysis. Dialysis actually, usually, its cornerstone is the diffusion, which is the passive movement of solute from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration, as we see in this graph. On the right side, you can see that the diffusion by itself will not affect blood volume and will not need a replacement. And by time, it will reach equilibration. And at that time, nothing will benefit for the patient. That's why we make what of one of the miracles that God make in our kidney, which is the counter current system, so the blood and dialysate usually move in the opposite direction. Coming to the technology that come after that, which is the filtration, the convection process, which is now it's not passive. It uh, depends on hydrostatic pressure that compress the blood. Again, it's the filter of the membrane just to move the solutes, which is non-selectively removed with a certain limit of molecular weight and just to come out. But on this issue, as you see in the blood, the blood will decrease in volume, so you need, because the filtrate is coming out, so usually you will need for supplementary fluid. After that, the next basic is osmosis, which actually is the cornerstone for ultrafiltration in peritoneal dialysis, which is movement of solvent from the area of low concentration to the area of high concentration across a semi-permeable membrane, which is this usually through the osmotic pressure developed by the solution, either through ecodextrin or the glucose that we use nowadays. <coughs> it's usually more osmolar, more osmolar than the uh, blood, so it removes the fluids through it, and the solutes, as usual, move freely, a small solute, especially by the diffusion process. Coming to, after that to the ECMO basic, ECMO actually is just a cannula admitted in the patient to get the venous blood and after that, you're going to centrifuge it, then expose to heat, exchanger, and oxygenator till you oxygenate the blood and reinfuse it again to the patient. It either, I say, it is a veno arterial or veno venous, and usually it uses the artery from the femoral artery if we use the uh, veno arterial. And the venous you can take from everywhere. You can take femoral or just jugular, no problem. Coming to the extracorporeal carbon dioxide removal, which actually developed 
for the patient with hypercarbonic respiratory failure, type two respiratory failure, especially patient with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which usually have what's called narcosis because the CO2 retention block the center that work on the respiratory drive because the retention of CO2 usually above 60, which is sometimes 70, partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So this filter will help the patient to remove the carbon dioxide to reach its equilibration in the body, which is 40. After that, the next technology, the therapeutic plasma exchange come in the market. And we have two types of plasma exchange, which is filtration methods that used by nephrologists. We use the plasma filter and actually in Egypt, in the past, we was using the hemodialysis machine to, you, to make plasma filtration through just buying the plasma filter and use the normal machine and just replace it by either diluted albumin or plasma protein uh, for just the re replacement for anti uh, uh, coagulation factors that removed from circulation. From hematology side, actually they uh, make the plasma exchange through centrifugation method. And do we know when making centrifugation through a spinner, they have a spinner, this is spinner containing the blood, uh, moving around as you see in this picture. And usually the area of high molecular weight or the molecules of high molecular weight will go to the periphery and the center usually with the low molecular weight or the fluid that's containing plasma, but also uh, at the expense or at the cost of removing non-selective uh, molecules from the body, which may sometimes affect the patient negatively. After that, there is development of the natural carrier of our body. Usually we say the albumin is our carrier in the body. You know, when you go to the train station or the airport, you find someone usually to help you to carry your, your luggage. This is the function of one of the main functions of albumin in the body, because actually it's containing usually something like not a ligand, it is a receptor on the albumin, but the problem in the patient with liver disease that these receptors usually will be saturated by the toxins and the liver cannot detoxify this toxin to, to relieve the albumin. Uh, and uh, after a while, just increase in the body and make the, a lot of complication to the patient. So the Mars with this molecular adsorbent recirculating system come after a sequential okay, development of this uh, maneuver because it's starting by what is called the SPAD. The SPAD was a single pass album dialysis, but at that time they were losing a lot of albumin to make the decision for the patient. After that, they just make a new technology to recirculate and they, to unbound the albumin from its binding site, the toxin inside it, and they put it again in the patient and to continuous. After that, the new technology now is called Prometheus, but it is not our scope. Okay, so if we look to our dialysis patient, we found that we have unmet clinical needs and we need a new therapeutic options for the patient. Why? Because the long-term outcome in dialysis patients are still unsatisfactory, their quality of life and rehabilitation are suboptimal, sub Clinical complications are frequent and often severe. Uremia not fully corrected due to insufficient cleansing. There is a wide spectrum of molecule retained in blood. High level of molecule correlate with a specific outcome, like beta-2 microglobin as example. Patients are often inflamed, and this in the past, the Dr. Issa, I remember that in 2005 and 2006, there was an era of what is called the Maya syndrome. It's name what? Uh, malnutrition, inflammation, atherosclerosis syndrome. This a state of low grade inflammation with malnutrition and anemia usually drive the patient to extensive cardiovascular disease, which increases the mortality of the patient with hemodialysis. In fact, the other uh, hand, this, uh, this is uh, Professor uh, Kalantar Zada from USA of Iranian origin who have this hypothesis of inflammation malnutrition syndrome. Yes, yes, Professor. Yes, Professor Isa, yeah. Yeah. And at that time, you know, it was a breakthrough. But we just know the disease and we don't have the treatment at that time. On the other hand, the current membranes are inadequate to achieve full correction. New options are needed for end-stage kidney disease to just help them. Mm -hmm. Coming now to the new era. Our new era is hemoperfusion. What is hemoperfusion? 
As you see in this picture, the blood is moving through an inlet and coming in the airbag. So we'll say it clearly is an extracorporeal purification <coughs> modality where the uncoagulated blood pass through a cartilage. And this cartilage usually it's present as a column and it could contain adsorbent on it. So it adsorbs the toxin from the blood. So it will not affect the volume like the filtration. And on the other hand, will not affect uh, what I say, uh, uh, also will not affect the blood volume or affected by the molecular weight in certain degree. Uh, so if we make it more specified for the patient or the certain molecule and we'll make it hemocompatible, we can help our patient. Coming to the process of adsorption, if you saw, uh, look to this graph, you will find that the blood going from the inlet and coming from the exit through adsorptive zone. This adsorptive zone, by time, it starts to accumulate till it becomes saturated. After saturation, it will continue to uh, accumulate a lot of toxins and molecules behind it till it reach the breakthrough point where at that time, the blood will no more clean. The absorption basic is based on four steps. What are these steps? The interface step, this is the first step, and it is ex external and it is depend on convection. When the blood pass through the film or boundary or layer of the, of the filter or the cartridge, sorry, to outer surface of the sorbent. Then the interphase uh, step, with there is mass transfer of solute also by convection on the outer surface of the sorbent to the inner surface, to the internal porous structure. After that, we are starting a new technique, which is diffusion along the porous surface. And at the end, the adsorption will work on the solute through the porous surface. So if we look how it progressed to reach our breakthrough today in the era of the adsorbent. In 1960s, it is started by activated carbon. Then it, in 2000s, it started by inorganic porous material. And nowadays, we have uh, since 1970, and it is just upgraded, upgraded polymeric material till we reach now. Regarding the activated carbon, at that time, it was actually used for aqueous solution purification, used in detoxification, drug poisoning treatment. It have a nice character, like large internal surface, satisfactory adsorption property but it is not safe as hemodetoxifier because the interest, intrinsic poor selectivity, low removal efficiency, side effects from its rough surface. And on the other hand, and this is one of the most important issue, there is a deposition of carbon debris inside the organ. So it's poor biocompatibility <laughs> actually block it use at that time. Till nowadays, they make something like new coats or something like that. It's out of our scope now. Coming after that, during the 2000s in, in organic porous material, and actually in the market, they developed three types. The graphene, which is just an upgrade from the carbon, then the silica-based material, and the TIO. If you see in the down, it is not the needed or the prioritized for hemoperfusion. Due to many factors, which is high cost of production, limited structure design possibility, and the passable pathogenic substance removal efficiency. So what is the gain? If it will cost me too much, it is difficult to uh, regulate its shape, and actually it is not effective as I expect. Coming to the last one, which is polymeric material. The polymeric material actually have certain characters, which is high suitability for hemoperfusion, actually remarkable function, and stability under the constraints of physiological environment, biofunctionality, and biocompatibility. The polymer can be divided in two types. If we look, it is natural type and synthetic type. The problem with the natural type at that time, when it starts, the problem is degradability and the poor machinability. So it is difficult, although it was hemocompatible. For the synthetic, actually, we will want today to learn from the company about their aromatic copolymer, polystyrene. It is actually very nice in this structure designability, but without the code that they put, it is poor hemocompatibility 
But uh, uh, for our luck, the company modulate this issue by putting a code on their structure, which improve its HEMO compatibility. What is good also in this uh, polymer is high functional polymer. This company used divinyl benzene, which make a potent cross-link with uh, via multitude of reaction, which is held to increase the surface area of uh, adsorption. We have some principle for adsorption, like we have principle in dialysis. When we say in dialysis is diffusion, then convection, then this issue, actually it based on two main pillar in the adsorption, which is one is physiochemical interaction, and number two is biological interaction, which is uh, actually make a new, uh, very large progress in the market is the physiochemical interaction through the electrostatic force or through the hydrophobic adsorption. What I mean by that, I mean that if, like albumin, albumin is negative charge, okay? For our nephrology, God make our glomerular basement membrane is a charge selective. Charge selective means it is negative charge by heparin sulfate. And actually, this also cartridge, it is a charged by ions that it make it just make it uh, catch some toxins or molecule inside the body and dispel other issue through what is called sterene divinyl benzene copolymer and it have a very nice actually breakthrough especially also in liver disease as the prime told us biological interaction we know from the past you remember polymyxine and you remember through uh, professor de Gerdes in 2007 when they say, uh, start to say in Japan that we, they develop what is called the lexili column, lexili column was, was, were used at that time in removal of beta-2 microglobulin from the patient with beta-2 microglobulin accumulation, which is amyloidosis in hemodialysis patient. There is some substance characters that affect adsorption. What is this character? Number one, volume uh, kinetic parameter, which is volume distribution, compartment, have life, and there is physiochemical property like molecular weight, electric charge, hydrophilicity, and the hydrophobicity, and at the end, specific gravity. But the, regarding specific gravity, it is not so potent like the others. Coming to volume distribution and the toxicokinetics of the any toxin. We, when we have a low volume distribution, less than one liter per kg, it is distributed preferentially <laughs> to plasma. So, and on the other hand, it is also hydrophilic. Okay? This hydrophilicity makes it is possible to be removed by dialysis with the conventional dialysis or convective dialysis. When it is high, more than one liter. Now, we have a problem. What is the problem? The drugs mainly in the tissue. And it is not linear. What I mean by not linear, that the distribution between the blood compartment and tissue compartment is not equal. On the other hand, it is exponential, means that is exponentially multiplied in the tissue more than the blood. So you need for repetitive sessions through whatever the technique you will use to remove this, and it cannot be removed by dialysis, by any modality of dialysis. And on the other hand, need to be repetitive because the time of redistribution, which is 30 minutes for the water soluble uh, uh, molecule, it take a long time for uh, higher uh, volume of distribution molecules. And, uh, I want to give you a last uh, issue in distribution that is usually constant, but it is can change in overdose of drugs. Coming to the protein bound of the toxins, the lesser the protein bound of the toxin, the better removal by dialysis and the decrease the plasma concentration after dialysis as we see here by time in the dialysis. The higher the uh, bounding to protein, it will not removed by dialysis. Okay. On the other hand, when comparing hemodialysis, hemofiltration and hemoperfusion, for hemodialysis with cellulose in the past, it was maximum for 500 Dalton at a molecular weight. 
And after that, by polysulfone and synthetic material become to 2,000, and the hemofilter can reach sometimes to 40,000. But the issue is, it is only water soluble. Now with the breakthrough in hemoperfusion that can remove lipid soluble and the high protein bound molecule. Coming to the relation between the molecular weight and clearance. Why we choose the urea as a marker of dialysis adequacy in keto B? Because it's a small solute, it is volume distribution in the body equal to the water. So we just assess the body water to an the equation and start the uh, assessment of adequacy. Why? It is one of the first molecules that removed in the blood uh, by normal hemodialysis or conventional hemodialysis. But when we go down as in the right graph, you will find the larger the molecular weight, the lesser the clearance by hemodialysis. Till here on the left graph, you find that the hemodialysis cutoff value not exceeding maybe 10 or 15 kilodalton. But coming to the, after that for hemofiltration, just a minute exceed, exceed the hemodialysis. The only way to remove all is by extension transfusion, but on the cost of what you are removing everything for the patient body. It is non-specific and will and they may make the patient liable to many side effects. Coming to the hydrophilicity and the hydrophopacity, we must understand that the water molecule it have a polarity with negative charge toward the oxygen and positive charge towards the hydrogen. So hydrophilic substance usually attaching to the negative bond on the oxygen, which make it uh, soluble in the water and easy to be removed by dialysis. On the other hand, other molecules that which is hydrophobic will not be removed. Available home perfusion and devices in the market by the last update from the up-to-date, we have many companies, but today we will make more through light on Jaffron Biomedical with HHA, specifically 130, but they have a lot of issues from the polystyrene, divinyl, benzene, copolymer, which help us in many aspects of disease in many types of patients, not only restricted to dialysis patients. Coming to the hemoperfusion, if we look at it as extracorporeal therapy, Hemoperfusion can make done by itself, which is called direct hemoperfusion, which is the blood vision, something like machine of dialysis. It was also, we need a blood pump, which is a QP, which is B from 100 to 250 ml per minute, and just to pass through the serpent and will be cleaned and to go back to the patient. As I say before, net ultra filtration with hemoperfusion is zero, so it's not need for any fluid or albumin or anything for replacement like other modality. We can also combine the hemoperfusion with other modality, like hemoperfusion with hemodialysis or hemoperfusion with continuous kidney replacement therapy, like in ICU. And now we add to ultrafiltration hemoperfusion, which will give more benefit for the patient regarding the, rapid, uh, the rapidity of removal, a small solute, a small solute water soluble, and also the middle and large molecule, which is high protein and lipid bound. Coming after that to the plasma filtration absorption and the coupled plasma filtration absorption, which can be treat certain types of autoimmune disease. Uh, like in our nephrology, we can see the Wagner syndrome. We can see also the anti-GPM disease, uh, all types of vasculitis. It will be a very helpful because in this issue, as we see, it can remove the uh, antigen antibody complex and or uh, the antibody from the body and help you by returning the plasma again to the patient and do, will not lose all the coagulation factors that usually happen as a complication to the plasma filtration. Coming after that, we can make, <clears throat> we'll see this in just a while, okay. What is called the deep mask, it is double plasma filtration molecular absorption system. We just use two types of sorbent when we want to be more specified for specific molecules that we want to remove the zone circulation added after plasma filtration. Even we can combine the hemoperfusion with the ECMO to helping the patients with respiratory failure, either type, type 1 or type 2. 
to pointing to our dialysis, our job, the spectrum of inflammatory uremic retention molecules in dialysis is starting from the bilirubin with that some kilo dal some daltons to what is more than 60,000 dalton or 60 kilo dalton, which uh, show you from 20,000 to 60,000 how much inflammatory toxins and glycosylated and product and glycated into product and chemokines, okay, uh, present in the circulation. And one of the dangerous issue usually happen in the inflammation in the leukin-6 and uh, the transforming growth factor beta, which one of the major factors affecting tissue fibrosis in any disease. So the middle molecule can be summarized and we unfolding the story in the dialysis patient as follows. Dialysis related amyloidosis, it depends on the duration of dialysis and it is due to defect in removal if serum amyloid A and beta-2 microglobulin, the malnutrition, which is due to accumulation of leptin and the abatite and the suppressing toxin, cardiovascular complication, especially due to parathyroid hormone, osteodystrophy and homocysteine infection due to granulocyte inhibitor proteins that retain the body, anemia due to the criminal hepcidine and the erythropoiesis inhibitors. So, we have a rationale to use the serpent. Yes, we have a rationale. Why? Because we have limited efficiency of membrane separation process, possibility of selectivity and size exclusion during the adsorptive process, possibility of placing the serpent in direct contact with the blood. Our limitation that we must overcome it by the new technology come from Jeffron is that the sorbent must be hemocompatible and adequately coated. Size dependent non selective absorption may cause unwanted loss. Sorbent might alter the requirement for heparin in the circuit. So, our requirement for the efficient sorbent therapy is effective and safe sorbent material, material adequately designed sorbent cartridge, optimal utilization of the available surface of the sorbent, high hemocompatibility of the sorbent, easy application of the technique in any center or unit. The settled indication, and actually it is present in the Eastern, Eastern Asia guidelines for maintenance hemodialysis is uromic pruritis, uremia-related sleep disorder, protein energy wasting, microinflammatory state, either through the dialysis process itself or through autoimmune disease, severe hypersecondary secondary uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism, high, uh, hyper beta 2 microglobulin, refractory hypertension, restless leg syndrome, uremic peripheral neuropathy. At the end, I can say together we can achieve more teamwork is the best way to reach our target. And thank you.